after two two delays of Matt Pat saying, Oh well, oh, you know, working on the FNAF script, it's coming guys, you know, this weekend. It's finally out. That's probably my phone telling me that it's out right now. Yep. Get that crap away. It's out. Apparently, um, it's talking about Help Wanted with FNAF 4, because FNAF 4 is in the thumbnail. It's got Glitch Trap in the thumbnail, it's got Golden Freddy in the, t in the thumbnail. And apparently, it's talking about, um, I believe it's the enemy we don't know, or no, FNAF, the monster we missed, FNAF VR Help Wanted. And right off the bat, he starts reading a quote from the book. So, I, like everyone, am super interested to see what's happening. I know I'm probably... <laughs> these reactions you know i'm always like this is a stupid theory because let's be honest they've gotten a little bit um questionable <laughs> i guess to say the least i don't hate matt pat i think everyone always assumes that because i criticize the videos that's what you do it's my reaction it's my you know feedback to it that's what i think of the video i'm allowed to do that that's the whole reason why it's called you know a reaction to it i'm reacting to it giving my thoughts, giving my opinions, all that crap. I know all these videos still get hate anyways. I honestly couldn't care less because I just want to see what is coming out of Matt's crazy mind whenever it comes out of FNAF game theories. Because, again, they've gotten very, very strange. But who knows? Maybe this one is going to be um, giving some really neat information. Um, again, he's going back to the Freddy Files book to um, reveal some information about the fourth clause at which is right there, and the fourth closet's down there. So let's just stop wasting time, stop blabbering on, let's watch the theory. Oh, it's got no views but 2K likes. Interesting. Books offer a closer peek at Henry and William Afton, how their partnership mm. flourished early on, and how their view of the animatronics evolved over time. Thoughtful fans might want to give these Ed, sections a closer look to determine how they thoughtful fans the you say the games as well right there clear as crystal for years i've been trying to piece together the story of these games right but nearly five years so so many theories later one thing has always served as a major sticking point and that thing has been these books now what? admittedly these books entered the series at a tough time FNAF 4 had released a few months prior, the game that, to this day, serves as the single biggest point of frustration for anyone trying to piece together the lore. He's got a point. Sonic always trolls us. See also the repeated use of the name Jeremy. But this one, this one game, was just too much. It was a game that played with so many different ideas. It played with dreams and dates and bites and... Uh, people, man, dream and new theory. characters and new toys. Kids that looked like established characters. I mean... What was <laughs> Scott brought new characters into a new game. That is crazy. That's just something you cannot Real? do. What was it? No one had any idea, and still to this day, we are at a loss about what this game means. FNAF for 4. The I don't know. That's basically <laughs> Matt right now. FNAF franchise. I don't know. Just make a video about it. It'll get like 10 million views, which again, I have a feeling this is why this is coming out. You know, let's get that. Ad rev. Shortly after that, FNAF World would enter the picture, and well, we all know how well that one went. <laughs> it so, had a rocky start, okay? Say, it was a sensitive time for the series, and sandwiched in between it all was the Silver Eyes, the start of the novels, a story set in the FNAF universe, but not. I like how he shows the updated Freddy Files, not the original one. Also, he shows the Fazbear's fights, which aren't even out yet. He doesn't show the graphic novel cover, he really? doesn't, you know. Question mark? Scott Cawthon, when the books first came out, tried to make it clear what role these played in the greater story, but I don't know if it helped things. Here's his quote. The truth is that after a while, lore can become so dense that there isn't any room for a story anymore. Another I remember this. That this was good. A good game doesn't necessarily make for a good book. Sometimes a timeline gets so full that the only way to tell a real story is have that story set in a different timeline, an alternate universe, a different location, or perhaps from a vantage point that isn't entirely what it appears to be. It's an interesting quote. True to Scott's style. <laughs> Man, if only I had him throwing my phone over there. So guys, we're going to be reacting to game theory. Let me just uh, start the video. Oh, okay, so that's what I mean. Oh, I'm, I should probably show it, like, full... Okay, I'll get off my phone. It doesn't give anything away. I mean, everyone immediately latched onto this idea that the books were somehow a separate and alternate universe, but if you come back and read that quote again, like, 
I just did here for the first time in years. Like as you can see right down here. There's actually only one of the possibilities that he raised. In fact, now that all three of the books have come out and completed the main Fourth closet has been out for a uh, for a while, Matt. It's been okay. Story arc, we actually know what they really were. It was that last thing, a vantage point that wasn't entirely what it appeared to be. Now, spoiler alert for the books, but basically at the They've end been out for a while, but spoilers. Fourth closet, it's revealed that our main character Charlie is an animatronic recreation of a dead girl. That the brilliant roboticist Henry, F. co-founder of Freddy's, had a daughter named Charlotte who was kidnapped and killed by his partner William Afton at the age of three, and that out of his grief he rebuilt her. And that the character that we've been following for all three of these books isn't actually a human being. Was that him smacking the books in the background? That grows older with time. Now, sounds really weird, but here, let me explain. So, the four closets. What that is the point of a theory, you explain. Anyways, continue explaining. That's in reference to, basically, Henry created four versions of that robot. Each one meant to simulate a different life stage that she would never get to experience. Toddler, tween, teen, adult. Thus allowing this robot child to grow up over time. Grow. Each one of those robots with fabricated memories of a childhood he created using a camera and tripod. And if you think that sounds weird, then you haven't finished reading this book, my friends, because this book jumps so many sharks. But that is nothing compared to what this book does to the animatronic baby that we all know and love. Baby. Oh, bro. Clown girl. Well, in the books, she's actually the perfect fourth adult version of Charlotte. But she's also the robot that still, like we see in the games, devours it's Elizabeth. his daughter Elizabeth and then goes on to get possessed by her. So this one robot is simultaneously Elizabeth's soul inside of Charlie's adult body. But in addition to dancing and singing and extruding out ice cream, she also has the ability to switch between looking like a passable human, so much so that a character in here actually gets aroused by her. No forgot about that. <laughs> Damn it, the thing Scott writes. And also expanding somehow into a giant clown-shaped robot, the one that we all know and love. She does this by using a combination of needles with little balls on the end, as well as sound illusion discs. I mean, how ridiculous is this, right? It's a good thing nothing that stupid appears in the games. Whack. I mean... Those are obvious, right? <laughs> Guys, did you notice that Circus Baby is in her own game? <laughs> Whack. <laughs> this is, this is literally, he covered this. He covered the sound disc being in this location. He made a whole theory and video dedicated to the sound disc being in Sister location. So if he brings up this topic, this is the biggest. They are actually. If you look at baby's design as it's presented in the games, you see exactly what this book is talking about. The needles with the little balls on the end, and yeah, even the weirdo sound illusion discs. You might see where. Notice how he wasn't like the sound disc that I covered in this past theory. No, 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 guys. This is a whole new discovery I've made. Also the. The needles with the balls on the end, those are clearly there. I'm pretty sure everyone has seen those. This, right? Well, many hardcore fans want to dismiss the books and treat them as a separate entity. Wall them off entirely from what's going on in the games. Hardcore this fans, game, like I did right here, Silver, in the past. What allowed me to know that Purple Guy's name was going to be revealed as William Afton before Sister Location actually revealed that to be the case. Before he did? Wait, wait, wait. Just can't. This book right here, Silver Eyes, is what allowed me to know- Ah, yes. Guys, he called it. MatPat called it. Just him. No one else had that prediction. I may be being a little bit harsh on him in this reaction video, but oh my god, I've honestly just had about enough of his theories. That purple guy's name was be revealed as William Afton before Sister Location actually revealed that to be the case. Those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. <laughs> These are the things that confirm that I did that were missing children's incident victims before it appeared in FNAF 6. The fourth closet explained what Candy Cadet stories were all about. Five animatronics, five souls all melted down into one entity. But the 
because my theories based on the books tended to frustrate hardcore community members and <clears throat> off of using them. But Fail, Pat. Here we are now, me sitting on the couch reading this. The Freddy Files Updated Edition. Which, Hold on. In addition to including more fan art than a typical game theory episode. Oh my god, bro. Hold up, I got you. Page oh, wait, I'm way. Thoughtful wait. fans might want to give these sections about Henry and William a closer look to determine how they impact the story of the games as, as well. well. No bro, that's whack. These things. Right over here, these three, they're important. They are here to no crap! Is that literally his point for the past nearly seven minutes? The fact that the books mean something in in the universe. Stay. So for today, <sighs> I threw away everything, all our assumptions, all the things that I thought we had solved from the games, and I took a fresh, clean look at this franchise. This time, starting from the for the seventeenth time. And that brought me down an insane. Is that another ad? I don't necessarily think that today's theory is right. I definitely think that there are plenty of. I'm definitely just doing it for the views. All you have to say, Matt, just come out, man. Out of the realm of possibility for the story that Scott is trying to tell. It's a theory that's worth chewing on because it simultaneously overturns a lot of the assumptions that we've made about this series, while also filling in a lot of logical holes in the timeline of events. This is a big one. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Big <laughs> like what we missed in FNAF 4. Tiny Which is like my, my second you biggest video. Man. You know, orange guy from FNAF 6. I'm going to say he's Henry, original creator of the animatronics, co-owner of Fred Bear's Family Diner. That would make this Henry's house. In turn, that would thereby make FNAF 4 his house as well. And if that's his house, then this is Henry's son. And this is Henry's other son. That's right. Crying child isn't any member of the Afton family. He is Henry's son. And then that would make this and this Henry's daughter. And therefore, this then would be Henry's daughter's empty room. Now, hold on. I am sure there are plenty of you hardcore fnappers out there who are ready to tear this huge list apart. This oh, I've already Afton done that. Trust house. me. We have established this time and time again since the release of... <laughs> he shows it right there. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, there. Oh my Television. god. But stay with me. Sit back. Relax. <laughs> my kitten. Pull out your pen and paper. Start taking notes for your angry rage comment down below. This is a FNAF theory unlike anything we've ever talked about. So let's just jump into it. So I He could have shortened this intro by so much. He is eight and a half minutes into the video. He is eight and a half minutes into a 24 minute video. And he's just now getting to the theory. Gotta drag out that watch in watch time. I told you the big reveal at the end of the fourth closet that our protagonist Charlie is a robot built in the image of Henry's dead daughter. But Correct. there is one last twist here. On the very last page of the book, we go to visit Charlie's grave. The real Charlie. The child who was kidnapped and killed at an early age. It's a grave that ends up high on a hill under a lone tree, similar to a very familiar scene that we see in the game. Mm -hmm. FNAF 6, the gravestone ending. And Correct. It, we're told the following words were etched into the stone. Beloved daughter, Charlotte Emily, 1980 to 1983. First off, her last name is Emily. I mean, there's no other name written here, so that isn't her middle name. So Henry's last name is Emily? We're talking about the Emily family household? Just weird. I mean, this is a- Why? It's, 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 it's a name. <laughs> Filled with animatronics that are possessed by human children and metallic soul glue, but Emily as your last name? That has to be the single largest stretch of imagination out there. And no offense to anyone with Emily as their actual last yeah, name. Yeah, wow, way to go there, Matt. Just Good. My rage for comedic effect. But the important thing Hilarious. Here is the date, right? Born in 1980, died in 1983. 83. Should sound familiar, right? Well, why does it matter? FNAF 4. FNAF 4, a game that ends with someone getting themselves bitten, is not depicting the bite of 87 like we all... Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, if Mustard Man really is Henry, and the crying child really is Charlotte, then Charlotte has two siblings, right? The older brother 
and the the um, the empty sister's room. But in the books, Charlotte's sibling is a younger brother, Sammy. Not only is he younger than her, which wouldn't make sense seeing as, you know, it's the older brother and then, I don't know, older little sister, we don't know. Charlotte doesn't have a sister. Okay. Oh, See if he explains this. Scene, but instead is a game that is set in the year 1983. It frustrated everyone. I mean, why Whack. did you choose to do that, Scott? It made no sense for the story that we had become familiar with by that point in the series. It made no sense until today. We know that the until specifically today. Gravestone is real. We know that Henry truly has a daughter who dies and goes on to become the puppet in the games. So what if that death took place in 1983, like we see in the book? Opens up a lot. Don't we see Charlotte die outside of pizza? I mean, didn't he just show it right here? Isn't that Charlotte? Ugh. You see, the other thing that I don't know, bros. Is this empty girls' room that we're allowed to explore throughout FNAF 4's minigame. Clearly, there's a reason it's here, but we never get a clue as to why or who that room could belong to. This, in turn, led all us FNAF theorists to speculate wildly about the owner of this room. Anyone with two X chromosomes was up for debate. This pigtail girl? And that was it. Honestly, because she was literally the only girl that was introduced into the series at this point. Later, when Sister Location came out, we got ourselves a second girl. And everyone celebrated. It was Afton's daughter, Elizabeth. So that room had to be hers, right? I mean, the game was even alluding to it being hers because- If this is Charlotte's room, why- And if Charlotte- Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm really trying to piece this together. Because I really want to think about this. Because I know people get mad when I criticize the theories. I'm really trying to think about this. If he claims that the girl's bedroom is Charlotte's room, and Charlotte is the crying child, because according to him, she died in the bite of 87, or not the bite of 87, bite of 83, why would she be in her sibling's room, or her parents' room? Because it was the sister location. Why would she go there? Why wouldn't she just stay in her own room? Question all of those assumptions, because that's what they are, really. There's not a whole lot of proof here. What if that girl's room in FNAF 4 Theory. belonged to Charlie? Charlotte, Henry's daughter, who dies in 1983. I mean, the room is empty, after all. And we're not seeing a whole heck of a lot of girls wandering around the playground area. And the year certainly matches the year of the disappearance and death. But why is she in another bedroom? Could girl's room in FNAF 4 actually be Charlotte Emily's room? Could this whole house from FNAF 4 actually be the Henry Emily household? Consider this. In the second novel, the Twisted Ones, a climactic final battle happens in an underground animatronic facility. Sounds a bit like our sister location. When our heroes emerge to the surface, they find themselves in the ruins of a familiar house. Here's the quote. Don't you see where we are? Charlie whispered. John, it's my dad's house. John. It's the room we found. The underground facility isn't under William Afton's house. Instead, in the books, it's hidden under Henry's house. And now, what do we see in the games? A hidden facility buried directly under the FNAF 4 house. A house that we've been assuming up until this point to be Afton's house. But it's starting to look more and more like it might be Henry's. And that's not all. Let's take a minute to flash back to FNAF 6, shall we? Now, overall, I feel like we've done a pretty darn good job of wrapping up this game. Ah, uh, man, didn't get in the ball pit. On the different gravestones. We know what Candy Cadet is rambling on about. We know that Fruity Maze girl here is Susie, who gets lured away and stuffed into Chica. Heck, we even know that the game itself, this building, could be the potential box. Uh, God, I always hated that theory. I always hated that theory. I just, it seems like such a stretch. Like, you know, it's the outline of a building. Buildings are usually rectangular. Here the pieces all come together and eventually get burned away. But it's nice, and it nice little bow, but that theory, I don't know. A mini game that, true to form, was the one moment in every FNAF game where everyone collectively looks at the screen and then slams their head on the desk. What? There's an orange guy now? Who the heck is the kid? Where did he go? Why is his window broken? Why are there footprints outside of the window? What is going on? I mean, we what? smoothed over 
so much of this three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't count that fast. He didn't even include more. Niggles the back of my mind. If I could ask Scott Coffin one thing about this entire franchise, this is the one that I'd want him to explain. X no for joke, doubt. I don't care about anything else. This is the one that I feel so befuddled on. Why I'm Do so you... determined to solve it. Do you, Scott Coffin? Hey, the past, it's me, I'm Austin. I'm fairly confident saying that the mustard man here is William Afton because he drives a purple car and he's driving away from the scene where the puppet girl died. But now... The puppet girl, which... Isn't that Charlotte? I'm not so sure. It always bothered me, and literally everyone else, that a guy who has been associated with one color, the color purple, for the entirety of this franchise is suddenly orange. I tried to dismiss it as Scott pulling a Scott, but you know, that's not the most satisfying answer. It doesn't feel conclusive, you know? And more importantly, those footprints outside of the window, I mean, why are they there? Either an animatronic that gotcha life? <laughs> this boy outside of his window, but that seems unlikely based on how we know these animatronics. This became. boy or this girl or being Charlotte. Someone in a costume showing up to God, lure the boy costume. out of his room. That one definitely seems like the more likely solution, but the only person in the entirety of this franchise who would do something like that is big ol' Willie A. And why would he do something like that to his own kid in his own house and then get mad about it? Things just don't add up cleanly. It's a question that really started to bother me when I was playing FNAF VR Help Wanted. Glitch Trap is clearly modeled after the first suit ever used by William Afton. You can tell based on his stitching. This is a hand-sewn bodysuit rather than any sort of animatronic suit that we would see later in the series. <laughs> hey, Freddy. <laughs> so coincides with the timing of the Midnight Motorist cutscene, which shows the birth of the puppet. One of the first major... Which is Charlotte, because, you know, at the ending of Pizza Sim, Henry's there telling his daughter, Hey, you know, sorry, I couldn't help you out there. You're kind of dead now. Oops, big F. And then it shows all the cutscenes from Pizza Sim, from FNAF 2, to the FNAF 2 minigame, to just the puppet in general. <sighs> this theory isn't the best. Just like the footprints outside of the boy's window. Now, as we know, Scott Coffin likes to clarify things in his next game. And if there was one huge question mark left from before, that Midnight Motorist minigame was it. So we have ourselves a suit that would have been in use around the time of the minigame, as well as a matching foot pattern to the design that we see in the minigame. Heck, we even have ourselves a potential reference to it from Ultimate Custom Night and the Toy Chica cutscenes. <laughs> oh god, not this. <laughs> I thought I was done with you. I told him to come over later. That should be enough. And if he doesn't show up, I'll just go to his house. And if he doesn't open the door, I'll just find a window. And here's where everything starts coming together. Let's assume that William Afton... In I'll be honest, I, I didn't think about that. Three toes ...is the one who's standing outside of that window. Outside of Henry... But according to Matt, and I know I'm, I'm sorry I keep pausing, but again, I'm really trying to figure this out. According to Matt, isn't... The Toy Chica cutscene, or maybe this was Darko, I can't remember which one exactly. Um, isn't the Toy Chica cutscene from Custom Night supposed to be symbolizing Afton's, you know, kidnapping of the kids? Henry's house. He lures the crying child out, now Henry's son, to bring him back to the place that he loves more than anywhere else in the world, Fred Bear's family. Wait, wait, so now the crying child is Henry's son? What? <laughs> But we know that this is also the night where William takes his first victim, Charlotte. He's killed outside of the diner. This yeah, exactly. Charlotte's killed outside the diner. Oh my god. Matt is literally going all over the place with this theory. Charlotte's the bite victim. Charlotte's the puppet. Charlotte's the crying child. Charlotte's got lured out by the glitch trap from their house. Choose one. Choose one. This would explain why in FNAF 6, the crying child would actively run to Fred Bears against his father's will, but later, come FNAF 4, he would be terrified of stepping foot there. Remember I don't understand. And all that, as psychic friend Fred Bear reminds him constantly. He saw the murder he... happen that night. That so that's Charlotte. Seeing in that FNAF 6 minigame. Meanwhile, we have ourselves the... I am legit confused. I, guys, I would love, love to really, really think about this theory, but Matt is literally like he's got one theory here one theory here and they just they don't connect 
Charlotte's the Puppet, where they get killed outside the FNAF 6 uh, minigame, pizza or whatever, and then Charlotte's the Bite Victim, where they die there. They don't connect. You can't have, you know, two original Charlottes. The Mustard Man, who we're assuming is going to be Henry. He has a kid who has not only run away on multiple occasions, but is so determined to do so that he's willing to break through his own window to get there. So, how do you keep him safe at home? Gotta pay for this window myself. In his room, just like we see happen in FNAF 4. But maybe locking him in his room is Use the sound disc, just like I covered in a previous theory. Heck, hidden around your house. Hiding a security camera inside the Fred Bear plushie that he takes everywhere. Hey, this was also covered in a previous theory. To keep track of where he is at any given point in time. Heck, maybe you could go so far as to design sound illusion discs to make him scared of the animatronics that he's seeing. His once beloved animatronic friends now terrifying to him, causing nightmarish hallucinations of the characters. Just like the discs that we see hidden inside of Funtime Freddy's chest and sister location. The same discs that Henry is confirmed to have <laughs> created in the books. These two, right here, they play a huge role in these two books. Huge. Though most of them in the books bear Afton's name, they were originally created by Henry in an attempt to warp the world around him, to hide from the grief that he felt after the loss of his child. Discs that, wouldn't you know it, Afton hides inside the Funtime robots, just like we see in the games. But as we see in FNAF 4, it isn't enough. The crying child still winds up at Freddy's. He still Stupid gets brothers. Bitten, and he dies. With that iconic line in yellow, I will put you back together. Now, remember that quote I keep going back to in this book right here, second to last page? Thoughtful fans might want Hold up, let me get there, Matt. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We all know I gotta keep up with you because I'm very confused right now. Yep, hold up. Yeah, I'm there. In the books, uses the robots to bring his daughter back to life. Mm -hmm. He rebuilds her. Correct. He puts her quite literally back together. Whack. He used the robots to try and heal his grief. I mean, if anyone in this series is going to say a line like, I will put you back together, it's Henry. Heck <laughs> Contrary to popular belief from your previous theories, that's Henry. Maybe Mustard Man is the color that he is in order to better match the color of his FNAF 4 text. I will put you back together in yellow. And yeah, sure, it's yellow and not orange, but guess what? Purple guy was pink in his first outing. As the series has gotten darker, so too has the color palette. But seriously, there are two colors that are relatively similar. Maybe there's a connection there. And if the crying child is in... Wasn't there a whole debate about that text in the past because also wasn't the puppet believed to hold that text and then it was golden Freddy, and then it was afton and now it's henry indeed michael as i've talked about a lot in right wait isn't wait hold on the crying child is indeed michael as i've talked about a lot in past videos. which would be weird because wasn't the crowd child at, at the start of the video charlotte so now charlotte is michael Henry literally rebuilding his lost son like he does his lost daughter in the books explains all of the weirdness of Mike's behavior throughout the series. How he's able to survive being scooped, how he has fragmented memories of his past, how he doesn't die after puking up mom's robot spaghetti, he how he's die. only able to die by, by fire. I should be dead, but I'm not. It's also worth noting that at no point in the series is michael ever explicitly michael. identified as michael afton now it seems like mike and sister location is referring to william afton's father Papa. it's me michael and i did saying, it come find you as springtrap appears definitely makes it seem like he's going out and looking for william but that may just be another Scott misdirect. It's open to interpretation. I mean, this scene alone still has people convinced that Springtrap is, is Mike oh God. trapped inside of the suit. <laughs> Mike, Mike trapped, trapped. Even though I feel like it's pretty well established at this point that uh, William Afton is. Yeah, it's guys, still will trap. come on. But there are people who are vehemently determined that Mike Trap is the reality Hashtag of the not my spring of trap. series. Regardless of the whole Michael stuff, William Afton in these books is all about achieving immortality through the robots. He's mm -hmm. interested in the science 
of it all. He wants to study the original FNAF gang and replicate So now he's gone from talking about Henry to talking about Afton. That's why we see him tearing apart the robots in FNAF 3's minigames. He wants access to their metal. He wants to harvest it to run experiments. He wants to melt down those living endoskeletons so he can harness the possessed metal to create the Funtime animatronics. I mean, that is the whole point of Candy Cadet's stories in FNAF 6. Yeah. Five things melted down to create one thing, and it's exactly five to one. One. Has a huge plot point in the final book. Henry, on the other hand, is the emotional one. He's a creator who gets to invest. Back to Henry. <laughs> He's a bit of a neglectful father. Bouncing from top to topic. Devastated when he loses his daughter. Oh, losing his daughter to the puppet, not the bite. Turning to the one and only thing that he knows and understands to try and bring her back. Robots. He goes to extreme lengths to use his robotic skills to try and bring her back to life, and he does it. He succeeds. He creates the most absurdly lifelike humanoid animatronics ever in science fiction. And they have to be to do some of the stuff that you see happen. Circus baby is Elizabeth. We see that crap. We Charlotte is a brunette. She has brown hair. Elizabeth is blonde. You you can't whatever. Charlotte, I believe, um, let me see if I can quickly find it here. Because Elizabeth has, uh, I believe it's blue eyes, and Charlotte has, hold up, uh, brown eyes. So they are definitely not the same person. ...in these books because it is absurd. But if we are truly meant to apply the themes of these books to the games, then this isn't the Acton family household. It doesn't make sense. It's the... You, you're right, it doesn't make sense. So theory doesn't make sense. Emily family household. It would explain the factory under the house. It would explain the empty girl's bedroom in FNAF 4. It would explain the 1983 date that we're presented with. It would say why Mustard Man is yellow, why there are footprints outside the window, why the crying child is suddenly scared of Freddy's, and it would even go so far as to explain the line, I will put you back together. For the 5,000th time. to this thing? Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of holes. Things that are difficult to explain. Are you kidding me? This is FNAF. It's gonna be true no matter if this is William's house, Henry's house, or the freaking White House. It's an extreme. It's gonna get views no matter how the, is the theory is. Of its alignment with the books, and because of the lingering threads that it answers, which is why today I encourage you to discuss down below in the comments. This oh, wow, really, man, Matt, you all, you all of a sudden such a nice guy. Discuss over on Reddit, and most importantly. Remember that, that it's, it's just, just a theory. theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. So what was the conclusion again? <laughs> the theory has a lot of interesting points, and as Matt said, it definitely does have a few holes in it, except I really can't get around those holes. I mentioned so many flaws in the theories. Um, or just in the theory in the video in general, like the whole bedroom situation, why would Charlotte be in a different bedroom, and the fact that he has two colliding theories, the fact that either Charlotte died in the Bite of 83, like it says on her gravestone, or that she died at the hands of, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> William Afton, and is then the puppet. Those two don't go together, <laughs> you know? And Elizabeth... Afton, or apparently just Elizabeth, who knows, she, she may not, not even be an Afton, who knows. Elizabeth and Charlotte, those are not the same people. Charlotte, again, brown eyes, brown hair. Elizabeth, blonde hair, blue eyes, or green eyes. I think it's blue. I honestly can't remember, but I know for a fact Elizabeth does not have brown eyes. So they definitely cannot be the same person. There's so many colliding points in this theory that it's really just difficult to understand. And he bounces between them so fast, like he'll be talking about the bite of, 80, bite of 83 in one moment. Then he'll switch over to be talking about um, uh, the, the sound disc, the illusion disc in FNAF 4. He'll be talking about the underground bunker and sister location. It's just so many colliding points that don't tie neatly into a video. And I don't really understand why all of this was put into one video. And I know I always make jokes about it in past theory reactions, and I made jokes about it in this one. I honestly think Matt should take a small break from making FNAF theories. Because then he comes out with, with you know, crap like this. Again, it has interesting points, but there's loads of colliding theories in this one. It just, it's, it doesn't really make any sense and 
as much as I don't want to believe that he's making these theories just to make FNAF theories, just to get views, just to get the ads, it's really difficult to, to not see it that way when he's coming out with theories like this that have colliding points. You know what I mean? And I know because I've said stuff like this in the video, it's going to get a lot of hate. But honestly, guys, think about it. <laughs> there are so many, so many colliding points. Again, Charlotte being Elizabeth in the same, you know, circus baby character. The Bite of 83, Charlotte dying there or Charlotte dying at the hands of the puppet uh, and, and William Afton. It just doesn't go together. And I don't understand how Matt didn't notice this. I realized that he went into this theory and the script, writing the script with a different point of view instead of looking at it from the game's perspective, he was looking at it through the book's perspe perspective. But you gotta realize that. You have to realize that either you die at the hands of Fredbear or you die at the hands of William. You cannot die from both. You cannot have two original Charlottes. One die at the bite, one die um, and become the puppet. You can't have that. Because <laughs> then one gets rebuilt into Circus Baby or something, apparently. And apparently, you know, they're the crying child, but then Henry's son is the crying child. You see, there's another colliding point. Charlotte being the crying child and gets bit, or the crying child being Henry's son and being taken by Glitch Trap. Another colliding theory. It's just, there's so many points that I feel like really, really don't go together and just overall don't make a good theory video. But again, there are a lot of interesting points here, and I realize I've been talking at the end of this video for a long time. I was talking during the whole um, reaction for, um, for a long time, but I just wanted to get my points across because I realize a lot of people, you know, get mad at me when I make these points, but just think about it. Think about all those colliding theories, all those colliding points that I just mentioned in the past like four minutes, and just think about it. Take that into consideration. If you have to, rewatch the whole video with that knowledge and just really think about it. It really does not go together neatly, and honestly, it's just sad that Matt didn't even realize that. So, unfortunately, this is another theory from me. Again, loads of interesting points, but just way too many colliding topics. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.